You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Graceland After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Graceland After Show. Oh boy. Good evening, good morning, and good night. Welcome to the Graceland After Buzz TV After Show for episode six, Hair of the Dog, season one, of course, which is actually probably one of my favorite episodes this season so far. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show for Graceland on USA. I am joined here tonight by my amazing co host, Stephanie Georgie. This is her second show. Welcome. Hello, After Buzzers! Julie, unfortunately, will not be here tonight because she had a work event she had to attend, but she will be here next week for a little bit of teaser. Brandon J. McLaren in studio, who, of course, is Jake's on the show, and that's going to be a really fun interview and break down the episode that yes, he will be coming be in for. And, oh, and I am Stephen Lemieux. I will be the host for the evening on... USA's Graceland. So tonight we're going to talk about Charlie, like go in sections. It's going to be Charlie... And what and the the fallback from the fallout from last After episode. Last week. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk some Mike and Abby and maybe some conspiracies surrounding Mike and Abby, which I've been shouting about all season long. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to jump into the main storyline because that was really the bulk of this episode that kind of brings a lot to light that we didn't know about. I mean, if you if you haven't seen tonight's episode, do not listen to this after show. Like goes without too saying. Good. Too good. Goes without saying, but honestly, like after the things we've seen this episode, like watch the episode first, definitely. So Charlie, we first open the episode with a kind of like a weird cinematic sequence with Charlie's freaking out. She's coming down off her high. She's she's falling hard because when you take a very 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 hard drug, especially like a super empowered heroin that Odin mm -hmm. provided, you're gonna you're going to fall hard. Yeah. And uh, if everyone remembers, last week what we left off with with her fantastic O-mouth. So we saw it actually hit her, and then this, we saw what it did. And we it saw her O-mouth, and now we saw her o Yeah, like on some mouth. Basketball Diaries type stuff. Yeah. So, she's coming off of it. So she's high. She's coming down. She's in this room we don't really recognize. It's, it's not at Graceland. It's like a bummy place. Yeah. Empty. And and Briggs shows up to help her, starts helping her up and everything, and he tells her that it's a CI's apartment, mm -hmm. and she did, he didn't bring her back to Graceland because if the Bureau found out that she actually ingested or, you know, took real, real narcotics, yeah, she'd be done. her career would be over. Absolutely. And which I, it's kind of annoying because in a life or death situation, it feels like that shouldn't be held against them. Oh, yeah, of course. But at the same point, we find later that Johnny's, it's Johnny's, um, team could have been there mm -hmm. in, the, in the split second to cover them and get them out of the situation right. if it got too hot. Yeah. So we'll talk more about that in a second. But Charlie wants to go to Graceland. It's very she emotional. Does. I was just going to say that I love that part to see her do it because it came out of nowhere. And especially because Charlie's tough. Like, she's the one in the in the show where she's the, you know, the badass and everything else. And we love her for that. But that was that was super emotional. Like, she was genuine. That's how close. That's how, that's how much Graceland has become their home. That that's going to come out of her because when she did that she reminded me of you know when like for instance when i was like sick in the hospital once and all i wanted to do was go home like you know when you just get so desperate you want to get out of this place that you're not familiar with and she said i just want to go home yeah when you're really uncomfortable you're feel sick yeah. you feel like crap you don't really want to be in an unfamiliar place and it's it's also good to see the what uh on the first after show we had of course joe and chris and joe talked a lot about how Charlie is really the mother character mm -hmm. for this house. And we didn't see so much Paige or um, uh, what's what's the other Paige or Jake's. We didn't see Jake's at all, really, this mm -hmm. episode at all. 
um, talking about and viewing viewing Charlie as the mother figure, but we really, really see it with Johnny this episode. Yeah. And even a little bit with Briggs, even though they are intimate in a way, mm -hmm. it, it, it she really has come into this mother figure, and that is her position in the house. She she is the she is the person who kind of brings everyone together with yes. whether it be the sauce night or whether it just be her cracking jokes and which is so good that you mentioned that too because you're right now that I think about it even start even from like the prior episodes in the beginning when she's kind of consulting Mike when they're at the beach and she's like you know don't worry just do this this and that every now and again she's there to kind of help with advice she's there like you said like a mother figure where like you said also I do see it more now after seeing that moment between her and Johnny where you know they look out for each other and everything, but that's a little bit later, so. Well, yeah, so Briggs, of course, brings her to the place, and we have that going on. She wants to go home, and then the next time we see her is she's, like, really going through the withdrawal. This is, like, the, the hounds of withdrawal. She's throwing up. She's, she's kind of wondering what's up, so she starts investigating the place, mm -hmm. and she finds these cabinet doors that are locked, and yeah. she can't open them. And I think that there might be something that they took out later in the episode, because I think those are the doors that had what Briggs had hidden in there mm -hmm. to pull out later. But it just shows her try to open them. And we get a call from Johnny. This is, again, kind of bringing up her mother kind of relationship with Johnny. Right, which he calls her for the good heads up. Um, that they want her to come in, and that's so scary. Her heart probably dropped at that moment to think, you know, she, it's still in her system. She's still trying to get over it. And she has to see them. If they find out, guess well, this, what? This is another situation where, where things that Briggs does don't go really... Well, yeah. I guess she, she, Briggs didn't make her inject. Right. But at the same time, like, Briggs, without her consent, took her to this place to cover for her. Mm -hmm. And his plan is kind of not going according to plan because he figured he could hide her away. Right. Take all the blame for it. Hey, it's my fault, blah, 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 blah. But no, Caldwell, which we find out is this head guy in the bureau, I think that was his name, was Caldwell, mm -hmm. wants a report at 9 a.m. in the morning. And this is this is less than 48 hours after she injected herself with heroin. I mean, that's black tar heroin serious stuff. Yeah, well, and specifically what they'd given, you know, they were talking about it. This was something else, like, better than anything else that they'd had. And I think we underestimated how large this sting was mm -hmm. that, we were, that we were experiencing last episode because it really seemed... On the scale of the grandiose things that we've seen throughout the season, this didn't seem like that gigantic deal. But again, when it when apparently we're dealing with a setup for Odin, which is apparently a gigantic distributor, right. the FBI had their hand in it. They and they really wanted. They were keeping a close eye on it, and that's why he wants this report because things went so bad when they really shouldn't have. Is mm -hmm. what he's trying to get at. So. Charlie um, has to go to this meeting at 9 a.m., and she's freaking out how to do it, and she's going to do it. Like, she's not going to just skip it. Char Briggs yeah, is like, just... Yeah, it's a report. She's, you know, it's like co coming into work. You can't just call out for some things, depending on what they are, you know? Mandatory. Right. Mandatory. Johnny says, Johnny says um, he, he wasn't asking. Right. And Caldwell seemed like kind of an ass, too. Like, mm -hmm. he seemed like that very strict guy... Of course. ...who would sell you up the river in a heartbeat mm -hmm. if it got the truth out. Yep. So... We That's find back in the apartment. Back in the apartment where Briggs is now with Charlie. And he They're trying to figure it out. He brings up hair of the dog. Hair of the dog is kind of like a term for like if you're I think it works for more than just drugs. Right. Like let's say if you're getting really wasted on a Saturday night and you wake up with a bad hangover in the morning. You take a shot so that you can you get take, over it. You take a shot. It's hair of the dog. It kinda throws over that that mm -hmm. that haze that you have in the morning because your mind is kind of going through a withdrawal and right. per se it gets back into your system and then you, you start behaving the way that you did afterwards exactly so she he <sighs> brings out some heroin so mad, yeah. and he wants to give her 100 milligrams enough to make her act normal for a bit mm -hmm. but honestly it's it makes you mad but at the same time she would not have gotten through that meeting without it true yeah which can i just say that at this point i would like to say that i predicted at, Oh, I can't even say. Never mind. We won't get there. I'm gonna go. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to what I thought of. Remember, everybody, at this moment, I guessed something, and I think that I was right. And we'll tell you why in a second. But so here's a big star. Up. Briggs has heroin at the ready. Yes. So Briggs. And you're goes thinking in one of those cabinets that she was looking at in the bathroom. Yeah. Which I'm think, why they were locked. And I'm thinking that he has a lot more than just that. Right. Of course. Um. So he goes in the cabinet, gets the heroin, brings it out, and he convinces her. And she shoots up because she has to go to this meeting. Mm -hmm. So the next time we see her is 
right before the meeting with Briggs, and she, Briggs is worried. Mm -hmm. He's not really too happy with the plan. It's the only way to, it's the only possible solution for this problem. And I'm sure he's worried because what does she say right before he gives it to her? I, the worst part is, I want it. Yeah. Because that's what heroin does. Like, you get hooked. This is a trained FBI, or excuse me, what is Charlie? I mean, Charlie's FBI as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a trained FBI agent who knows the rules, knows the regulations, what she's supposed to do, not to do it. She can't help it. That's the scary part, and she was right. She just wanted more. Well, there is, there is, there is that, but the, the realizing that you want it, like realizing... Um, realizing a dependency and addiction is one of the first steps to stop it. Right. So if you don't realize it and you just wonder why your body is feeling sick and stuff, that's mm -hmm. kind of a problem. But when you're like when you're going through withdrawal, you really realize why. It kind of helps you to mentally be like, you're I okay don't again. need it. This is why I want it, and go through it. And if you don't know too much about heroin, we were talking about this yeah. during the show because I asked. Which, okay, sorry, go ahead. Because for yeah. those of you, so I was saying, like, I didn't know exactly what the high was when people would so shoot peop heroin. People, people kind of compare heroin and meth similarly, but they're different. Mm -hmm. I mean, similar in some ways, different in others. They both really trigger dopamine receptors and shoot your body full of euphoria, basically. Right. Like, I've had, I mean, should I say the relation I said earlier? I don't know if it's inappropriate or not. Mm, yeah, go ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. so people have compared the first time you take meth or heroin as basically like a hundred or no, yeah, like a hundred like orgasms, hundred yeah. orgasms at the same time like it's just trying to emphasize the fact that it's intense. exactly it, it really it really just pumps your body mm -hmm. full of so many so much of this chemical that makes you feel amazing that's why they call it euphoria but when you come down the, the things you normally feel like maybe your knees hurt maybe your hips hurt maybe you have a headache all the time maybe you're the, thinking about something too much about, you yeah. don't really realize the pain because I mean, you're so used to it. Yeah, of course. But when, you're, but when you end up in euphoria for 12 hours, when you come out of euphoria and you start, you just can only focus on these things, like the pain of, the pain of living, right. basically, the pain of real life. Which is coming down. I mean, it's known as that for a reason, and you just become, I guess, sad, right? That it and... It gets intense, too. And the fact when you start going through withdrawal, it <sighs> just makes it feel 10 times worse because right. you can only focus on it. Mm -hmm. And that's why people fidget because they, they're just, like, trying they're to focus out, on yeah. something else until they get that next big fix. Yeah. So just that was a little bit of side knowledge. So you understand what Charlie's going through. And so we go to this meeting. <laughs> what? No, nothing. You're going. I can't wait to talk about this. Guys. Okay. So she says that she's used to playing high, but there was a great line when Briggs is like, look, there's, you're used, to, you're used to playing high while you're sober. There's a difference between playing sober when you're high. Right, of course. Which... If yeah. you've ever tried, I, had, <laughs> I know. <I've> been, <laughs> great story, really quick story. I had a friend who was super drunk, and we're like, "Dude, you're 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 not sober." Yeah. And he's like, "Don't worry, I can act drunk." <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like, "Yeah, yeah, sit down." Drunk. It's the same thing. It's yeah. like you because <laughs> because you can't focus, you're so confident, but at the same time, you're not. Yeah, your, your mind is somewhere else. It's your misplaced. subconscious is taking over your conscious, and then you're just nuts. And yeah. So so Charlie enters this meeting. Caldwell's really pissed off because mm. Charlie's trying to tell the same story, but we find out that, okay, well, Quinn could have gotten 25 to life for the fact that Whistler died in the bathroom. Right, he's interrogating her at this point. Exactly. And so she gets a little bit nervous, and thank goodness our boy Johnny is there for that. But that is, But that was a good point with Caldwell, though. Right, of course. Like, 25 to life, they could have used the sentence as leverage to flip Quinn against Odin, and then they would have had Odin, and then they wouldn't have had this whole debacle. Right. But then Charlie starts fidgeting, and good thing Johnny was sitting right next to her. So he takes the fall because he doesn't know what was going on, but he saw her nervousness. Again, this is the whole Charlie being the mother kind of thing, and then us as viewers being able to see the bond that all these characters have, which is fantastic because, you know, what does he do? He takes the fall. She tries to say that it's not, and then Caldwell decides to agree with Johnny, which... I understand that that's because it sounds more like the truth, but that also just bothers me because, I don't know, I think he was just, like, believing the guy over the girl. Well, it was uh, more, it was more, he believed the person who would, he believed the person who wasn't out for himself. Like, the person who was like, 
look like this is it was my fault like mm-hmm. taking fault as opposed to placing fault nowhere right and and because he she had was a, trying to avenge or not avenge but felt bad for whistler and she was just kind of scattered yeah she was scattered and johnny had a valid point he said if if they had if things have gotten more heated escalated further mm-hmm. i had set up my team too far away to effectively uh to effectively extinguish the situation. Right. And it was my fault because they knew that I was too far away to have helped them, so they had to get out of there quick without making a decision that would have mm-hmm. otherwise been benefited to the Bureau. Yeah. So Johnny takes the fall, and in that way, it doesn't seem like it'll be that big of a mark against him, but it's still a mark against him. But it does go back to, look, you have, you have your life, you have your job, and then you have the people in Graceland, and Graceland yeah, and comes first. And, it, like, I, I feel that's what I also liked about this, because as much as, you know, any drama that we're going to watch, we want to see the action part. We want to see that. But I, Or as a as myself, or as maybe if it's because I'm a woman, but I do like the drama a little bit. I do kind of want to see something going on. But I do, I love that we're genuinely starting to see the in-between. Well, like, I feel like I'm growing a connection with these characters now. So that's awesome, which I applaud the writers for that, because... Uh, up in this after that moment like how that was so wonderful such a good little touch to it when he just kind of like grabs her hand relax exactly like, I'm here relax and instantly she you could see it they do that so well too you could just feel the bond I love it because you know Graceland comes first mm-hmm. and you know what else comes first Ness's girl no <laughs> our podcast on iTunes when <laughs> yes. you go to iTunes Do and rate it. us five stars and comment because we we put a lot of effort into the, uh, these after shows and providing you guys with free content here at After Buzz TV and all we ask in return is to maybe go on YouTube and comment on our posts and everything and then definitely go to iTunes give us five stars we're at five stars mm-hmm. right now like Pe- us on YouTube also and don't forget After Buzzers we're here for you we're trying to you know we all we love the show you all love the show Let's uh, make the most out of it and get the most out of what we can with this show. Darn so. tootin'. And while you're on iTunes, you know what you can do? What is it? Tell you, me. You can search <laughs> for Zero Buddies, which is a brand new film from Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro, our, yes. our, of course, our executive producers here at After Buzz. Without them, we would not have these after shows for you guys. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we got to give them a round of applause. And they have actually created this new movie mm-hmm. called The Adventures of Zero Buddies. Which is um, all fun of... You can actually get it now. Yeah. You can actually find it on iTunes or just by going to ZeroBuddies.com. It's a great new comedy. It's not as dark as you would think when somebody says... It's a serial buddy road, serial killer road trip. Right, of it's course. actually just really light, kind of like <gasps> stupid funny. <laughs> okay, so we like, got Christopher Lloyd, that? Beth Barris from Two Bar Girls, <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford. Um, it's it's narrated by the Fonz. Right. So I mean, it's 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 just one of those movies that you'll watch. You'll you'll have a good time. You'll eat popcorn. You'll probably have a bunch of inside jokes with your right, friends afterwards. And then your friends are gonna be like, "Where did? Cool. What are you talking about?" And then you'll be like, "Just watch Zero Buddies. Get with the picture. Why are you not cool? Come on, man. Yeah. We don't want to talk to you anymore. You haven't seen Zero Buddies. So and this is night. It's making something kind of intense just become a little more. Let's... Exactly. When your friends haven't seen this movie, yeah. it's it's gonna outcast your other friends. So you gotta make them see it too. Right. But music like this in the background. Come on. This Why is actually. Wouldn't you to listen to it. This is actually from the score of Zero Buddies. So, anyway, definitely go and check that out. It's only $4.99 on iTunes, and we'll actually have it on Blu ray and DVD later this year. But be sure to check that out. And now, let us get back to our scheduled programming of USA's Graceland. But thanks for that, guys. Good evening, good morning, and good night. Welcome back to Graceland's After Buzz TV it's, After Show. Uh, Agent Smith here and oh, Agent Banks. Let's go ahead. Agent Banks, yes. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not doing that tonight. Okay. <laughs> So the last scene we see with Johnny and Charlie is that Cute. she's not eating, and apparently she says she's down, and usually she eats more when she's down. And and this is right after they get out of the office, mind you, everybody. Like, or excuse me, the when yeah. she goes to report with Caldwell. So Johnny really cares about Charlie. Yeah. Aww. I okay. love it. So he said, I love you. When they said I love you to each other, that was also great. Just because I feel like as adults and people who go through training like that and when you're doing things, you know, there's just not many people you can trust. And I just feel like sometimes it's silly when you talk that way. And, you know, they... Well, and there's so much you can do with dialogue like that and a scene with two people, like, 
alone together, mm -hmm. and it just shows. To sh it just goes to show that you can you can actually the direction is really well with the actors how they interact together without it turning into something More romantic. Like a, right, exactly. Which I was going to say that it's um, they did an awesome job showing the platonic love that this, yeah. this house has. Some scenes like that can go but romantic so really really quickly yeah. with, without even the intention of it. Right. And they did a good job with assuaging kind that. Kind of separating it, like kind of distincting the fact that although they're not related and even though human you know actions are inevitable they can still maintain that bond like that exists the the bond between friendships that are just like family exactly. genuinely like family so now let's go ahead and get into some Abby and Mike. Mm -hmm. Abby, Agent Abby, as I like to call right, her now. Yeah, today that for like a second, but now I have different ideas after. She knows last her thing. stuff. So okay, so Abby wants to meet Mike's roommates, and he's against it, of course. So he's like, and then she finally kind of says, you know, well I owe Paige something. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, well, so they have absolutely. this cute little meeting moment, like, oh, I'm looking for a girl. Oh, what's she look like? Oh, well, she's super beautiful. Blah 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 blah. She's got these gorgeous doughy brown eyes and brown hair, and it's it. It gets super, super cheesy. Hater. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not a hater, per se. Just it was cute. It worked for me. <laughs> I was in love at that very moment. <laughs> well, I can't wait till she betrays him so you can fall out of love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's okay. So so we get that little, little sneak peek. And then the next time we see them is Paige is here. Her cover is now that she's a pop singer. She moved here to be a pop singer. She's um, so cute, I love her. Right. And she's with Vance, who's a DJ. Yeah. All right. Which so they have a little moment there when they were describing it, like what they did. Yeah, and he did he kinda like fiddled around. He didn't know what to say, so he said he was a DJ and he's like, Oh yeah, a DJ at that club down in Santa Pe San Pedro or something on uh, Tuesdays, on Tuesdays. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, on Tuesdays. And then Abby just so happened to know it, so then Well, I think I think it was funny at the production of our thoughts. Because while watching this, we were thinking, oh, my God, is he, like, just, is he Paige's boyfriend, boyfriend that's, like, undercover dating. because he knows mm -hmm. what Paige does? Like, who is this guy? And then I was like, well, maybe he's another undercover agent. And then now there's another conspiracy because apparently everyone, no one knows about anything also at he, the same time. But we were wrong. So we Mike pulls her aside and <laughs> she says, just a drug dealer guy. No did you deal. bring your case on our date? Yeah. And he's like, well, Abby thinks this is a real date. And she kind of calls him out, like, "Yeah, is this a real date, Mike? Because mm -hmm. you know you can't have those. They're all, they're all about hit it and quit it in Graceland. Yeah. It's like the hit it and quit it land. Hit it and quit Get out of here. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they just, everyone sees them as like, oh, he's an astronaut. He, I know. He's a pilot. That's so funny. I'm surprised that they could even do that, because I feel like that would be difficult in... You'd think. Well, no, not for the men, obviously. With a face like Johnny Jakes, Briggs, and them, of course, I'm sure they can get it all day. But the thing is that, Char no, but Ch but Charlie <laughs> and Paige are also very beautiful. I just feel like it's, I mean, they don't talk about it that much, which is kind of good, but it's less ac accepted because they're women, so that sucks. But <laughs> but they're also not allowed to date, so then what, what does someone do? How I do mean, I think everyone knows Paige is getting a little something, something all the time. <laughs> I mean, Paige is that, it's, that's her character, though. I mean, that is how she's written. Kind of. She's I think that we see her. No, she's she's okay. She's written as very flirtatious and promiscuous, but mm -hmm. she's actually not. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you never know. I mean, she's... She's got a banging body. It I'll didn't seem that. like she was that disgusted by this guy. Let's just say that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So he pulls her aside, and she kind of, like, scolds him a bit. And we have a great line here that... Was one of the jokes of the show was but it um, went over my head. I didn't get it up right. So I, I, but it was fun to explain because it was a good joke. I don't know if you listeners got it out there, but, but Paige says you can't, you shouldn't start dating her. The only reason you should be dating her is if she becomes a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so Mike's like, oh, I think I just saw her steal assault and just walks away. Like end of conversation. <laughs> it's another, it's another great Mike moment. Like last mm -hmm. episode and was like, oh, you're wrong, mm -hmm. and you're wrong. Oh. Right. I think she just saw her steal the salt. Bye. Which is cool, yeah. And we're just, we're starting to see their different sides, like because we've seen so much of the agent side from the beginning because they need to distinct the characters. So I like that we're seeing like their their personalities. And even in that moment where you see the soft side with Mike and Abby, that's kind of cool. You're just unwrapping. Well, we're also seeing that uh, Mike is kind of growing into his cojones in the Graceland house. Like mm -hmm. when he first got here, he's like trying Nervous. not to mess with anyone, uh, yeah. and now he's like he's kind of got his own like. 
look, don't mess with me. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. And like, because he's becoming involved with his throw, own like missions and whatnot. He'll he'll so. dish it as much as he'll take it. Mm -hmm. So which is which is good because otherwise you get walked all over. Right. So then we get Abby and Mike. Um, Abby knows that Vance was a drug dealer. Right. Which at first made me think of exactly what you always say that maybe she's undercover. But at the same time, she remember the scene where he calls her and then she's out with friends. She she seems like a party girl, so maybe she just knew because obviously she's met other drug dealers like that. Well, at the same time, she was also left alone with Vance. Right. And oh. he could have just straight out like oh you maybe just didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think that I don't think she used her amazing deduc deducive skills to find mm -hmm. out. But I really think I still think she's suspicious. She's just she is just suspicious. Right. Lordy, she's suspicious. <laughs> I totally messed up saying that, but so they oh they kiss, and then that's the last we see of Abby this episode. Good yep. riddance. Next, <laughs> and kidding. then the next part, which is so good, this really great line um, when because we're then we see Briggs and Johnny because they and Mike they all start talking about the mission that they want to do for uh, you know the submarine and everything. Oh, are we? We're gonna start at the beginning, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. but. You can say it. No, uh, go. Uh, uh, you sure? You sure? Yes, you can. All right, all right, all right. So the new the new mission is Coast Guard. Uh, Coast Guard finds the submarine, mm -hmm. pulls it in. Uh, they get the guys out. They arrest them. And Johnny is the guy who's like, "Oh, it's my, it's my, it's my bust." Right. And there's nothing on the submarine. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, Johnny, good job, buddy." Um, and then Paige mentioned this is the first time they mentioned booby traps. And there was kind of a double entendre there they were joking about with Johnny and Paige, which was mm -hmm. shown there, the kind of friendliness again. I mean, you don't know if they have something romantic yet, because they They're both cool. They're so, like, laid back. I love them. But they clued at it last episode. And it's like, have kind you of. ever had a friend hook up? Yeah. And then they were both like, nah. Yeah. But at the same time, it takes a thought to bring it up. Right, of course. So you got... But, I mean, but look at them. Of course they're going to think it, and it's going to cross their mind. But can I just also say that Johnny, especially in this episode, he's genuinely such a comic relief mm -hmm. for, like, any moment that goes bad. He cracks me up. He's good. He's great. Um, so then we go to Bello and Mike, and we find out that the product is safe. Mm -hmm. they, they tow it in a torpedo shell behind the submarine, so if anyone pulls them over, they can just cut it loose. Right. So they cut it loose, but Bellows is, Bello is still mad and fighting with the cartel, and Mike's like, well, why Why are you mad? It's like, oh, it's just an act, Mike. It does, it's, it's all business. Mm -hmm. I get 15% off. I'm yeah. like, damn. <laughs> it's true, though. You go in any place, you complain, you right. get something. A bargain's going to be a bargain in negotiation. I guess drug negotiation. dealing's just the same. Their right? customer is always right. So they do that. And then uh, Mike comes up with the idea, well, hey, why don't we scam the cartel? Like, why don't we get a diver and grab the drugs, and then you get your two million in drugs, and then the cartel are the ones want trying to find their capsule and can't find it. And Bella is kind of not on the same page, but Mike says he'll get someone right. who is a diver who's not affiliated with Bello. So if anyone asks, they won't be able to connect it to Bello. So then we get Johnny pissed about the Western films on his DVR. Mm-hmm. And then brings out, that's so funny, you know. Films titled like this, if they're not naughty films, I don't want them recorded over my shows. Right. And uh, Briggs is pissed off. Briggs is pissed off of Mike's plan. And what I realized while watching this is Mike says, Briggs is pissed because now we have to find a diver. We have to find a Navy SEAL, something like yeah. that. And what I realized during this is that when Mike says the Bureau can handle it, can handle finding this, Briggs doesn't want the Bureau involved. Mm -hmm. They could easily, they could easily... I have a question. Did you think that prior to what happens in the end? Oh, immediately. I wrote it in my notes. Okay. Star, Briggs doesn't want the Bureau involved in his case. Yeah, okay. Um, because as soon as Mike says the Bureau can handle it, they can get us a diver, all I'm thinking is, all right, we got to introduce this Caldwell guy who is keeping an eye on everything Briggs is doing kind of with, this, right. with these big drug deals. Mm -hmm. This is a huge deal, and if he gets involved in it in anything, Briggs will not have his chance to skim off the top. Nope. And that's why Briggs is so against it. So Johnny ends up um, setting it up, like planned to set up. And in this episode, uh, Briggs keeps slipping because Johnny keeps being involved, I mean, without knowing what's going on and then letting no, like, yeah, this didn't happen. And then it's it's making everything much more suspicious. And then then we get led to the end, we, too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in between there's there's a little scene with Mike and a CO, mm -hmm. his uh, psychiatrist. 
and it actually shows that this is a plan to set up Briggs because he's going to he's going to basically deliver the heroin to Briggs on a silver platter and see if Briggs takes it. Yeah. But nobody saw Briggs take the drugs, so there's right. nothing really that they can do about it at this point. Um, because they decided to do it under wraps. That's why I was going to say on the on the boat they were when he makes the decision to like have him go down himself and do it because they did that without you know consulting anyone else mm -hmm. that's when he's like you know you don't have to be the hero i like, am the hero i'm the hero yeah but then again he's like don't he didn't tell anyone he doesn't tell mike about mm -hmm. that they go and find the drugs he doesn't tell the bureau it wasn't a mission it was honestly just hey let's go out and mm -hmm. check and see if we can find this torpedo to make things easier tomorrow right. when really it was briggs scoping things out to know how he could plan it ahead to and get what, what he wanted happen. right yeah so we get we get a uh we get Mike and Johnny, and they're talking about why Johnny's the Navy SEAL. And we learn why Johnny wasn't a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. It's because he's, like, being cooped up with a bunch of guys on a boat. I, gave, I told him my captain I had cabin fever, sent so they sent me to Iraq. Well, there you go, Johnny. And then he tried to do the Navy SEALs again, and he took the test, but he didn't f pass the test. Um, so their backup story is that they've known him five, or s five to six years. Mm -hmm. And Johnny comes up with this salary, thirty-two five seventy-five or something. It wasn't enough, so I'm been. He's been a merc for about five to six years. Right. And they're friends, drinking buddies. And that, and Johnny bluffs Bello into telling what the details. What the details are. Right. Which well, he does good. I always. And you know what's so funny too? In the the last episode, you know, well, you know what the one between Jake's and that the wee lady. I, he did the same thing where he walks away, and Johnny always catches me off guard because I'm like, what is he gonna do? Because it's almost, he has this whole, I don't give a, you know, anything about this, what's going on, and it worked. He walks away, bam, he tells him his details. It's gonna get him shot this season. <sighs> yeah, right. No, he's not gonna die, but it's gonna get him shot this season. I'll go on the show and shoot the other character. No, I swear to, I swear <laughs> to God, Johnny's gonna pull, I mean, every character does things that's like in, instinct, yeah. but at the same time, instinct doesn't go all according to plan. Mm -hmm. plan. And I got to say, we haven't seen enough instinct failing. Right. And I really think it's going to, like, this every time that scene comes up. But they're up, trained for it, too. I feel like he says it delicately enough or respectfully enough to where they don't get angry. They just see that. Because he mentioned before, look, it, I'm not going to lose my life for this. So if I don't know detail, then I'm not, you know, he want, he, all he did was tell Bello that I want to be well informed so that I do my job well. Yeah, but Bella, he knows that Bella would kill him before he exited that place. Yeah. So we're going to see they're trained for it. Training can only take you so far, though. There, in training, you know everything that can, you don't know everything that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you're in close training, there are things that you can do to fix the problems. Mm -hmm. But there's there's an infinitesimal amount of things that can go wrong in the field that may not have anything that you can do with training to fix. Right. And getting shot in the back while you're walking away is one of them. No. Because you you can't like walk away and be like. Like you have to walk away. You have you to. You gotta do a heat run. <laughs> no, you gotta walk away and be confident. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, and you get shot. Yeah. And I think that's gonna happen. To, I think that's gonna happen to Johnny this season. But um. You stay trying to for, like telling everybody. So while we watch the show, Stephen always says, "No, what's gonna happen is this, 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 and that." And I get so mad because I always go, "Really? Like, but you haven't seen the show yet, or well, at least." The but I wasn't ones. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I next. mean, my, predi my prediction last week was pretty pretty spot on. Yeah. Um. So, the deal's twenty thousand. Um. Johnny almost Johnny almost screws his cover a little bit, mm -hmm. um, except for the fact that I mean he kind of guessed what was in the torpedo if he didn't know before, because he makes a reference when they're filling out this map and they're trying to figure out what the radar is, and he says the torpedo's the eight ball, and he's like, "Haha, kind of makes sense, doesn't it?" An eight ball is a drug term for right. heroin. So, of course, saying it's the eight ball, he doesn't know there's heroin in this capsule unless yeah. he had talked to someone previously. Right. So dumb jokes like that can also get you in Atlanta heat if Bello had noticed it. Um, so they're going to use a multi-V radar fix wide scan to find where this torpedo is. They do that with... He ends up doing that with Briggs, of course. Mm -hmm. That was the boat meeting that we talked about. And... Da -da 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 -da. They Just find out there's my the bomb notes, on man. there. They have to disarm it. Yeah. That's when he, that's when the hero line comes in. And we see the SS Scatterbrain. Mm -hmm. That is that is the boat they're driving. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Johnny, this is also where we see that Johnny's really pissed off. Like when they're on the boat looking for it, Johnny's really pissed off at Briggs. Right. Because he did this to to Charlie. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he still keeps it professional by going back to the work and doing the work. But at the same time, he's not giving Briggs that, yeah. that friendliness that... Like, let's not do anything else. I want to see where the torpedoes are, figure out what we have to do, and that's it. Done. So they find it. It's a uh, mm-hmm. MK-46 military torpedo. They find out that it's still armed. Of course, he says he's the hero. And then we are brought to Mission Retrieve. It was, it was kind of a quick, quick like, night, gone. Then it's daytime. They're on the boat. And it's Mike, John, Mike Johnny, Bello, and Bello's dude with the big-ass gun. They're all ready to go. They're all ready to go. And we see uh, Briggs has his, things, his people set up on a pier a while back with everything set up so they can hear and talk to Johnny. Mm-hmm. And so Mike can talk to Johnny a little bit. I think right. it's probably a two. Which that kept scaring me because like, I was so nervous that at one point. Briggs would hear it? No, 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 no. At one point. I mean, uh, Bello. Yes. Because I was like, how, what is he doing? He's underwater. How does he figure out which button to press to it's talk to certain? It's two-channel radio systems that they're probably using. But I'm like, underwater? Still, like, yes, exactly. you got to click quickly, it with your tongue? You can, you, people, I send the wrong text to the wrong person, and it visually tells me that whose name it is. You know, when you're just, who knows? What many if they many relationships have ended that way. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but... Um, so another good part, again, this has to do with the relationship within the house when, because they know that Johnny's going to, you know, disarm the yes. torpedo, the moment also right before he goes in, like, you know, the look that he has with Mike and like, you know, well, it was like also the look when Bello takes the, takes the radio away from Mike because mm-hmm. Mike can't communicate with Johnny anymore. Yeah. Mike can't say anything to Johnny. That's why he has to communicate through big Briggs with his wire, mm-hmm. which is already very like conspicuous like hey yeah. boys he's like hurry up I'm gonna, gonna just talk killed. hey hey Bello Bello um excuse me for a moment while I talk to my shoulder <laughs> hey Briggs like <laughs> stuff's going down hey so he gets his message to Briggs yeah. like you know there's gonna he's gonna kill Johnny he's gonna straight up just kill Johnny yeah he convinces him let me give him a soldier's death there's something even even in the world today there's something to be said for people people will still feel prideful in an execution as opposed to just being gunned down like a dog right, of in, in some way. So, of course, if you're going to have to kill your friend, he'd, he'd rather do it himself than just have some random dude shoot him with an AK-47 or whatever that gun was, M16. And, and that, yeah, like you said, it's like a pride thing. I mean, I think I would do this. Yeah, sorry. And plus, if you're going to betray your friend like that, and, I mean, no, it's out of... It. And it's almost out of a defense thing, too, because like you said, you don't want to just get shot by anybody. That's, yeah. That's your person. Absolutely. So he he decides that he'll he'll be the one to kill Johnny. Which is a great part too, because you just see the nerves on Mike's face. Because at this point, Mike doesn't know. What's Mike didn't on? know about the the bomb. Mm-mm. Mike didn't know that it was our, that they already knew about it. He didn't know that they had already planned to well, have to disarm knew it. Johnny knew how, how to do it, right? And that it was going to be easy, and that was it. No, all he knew, what he thought at this point, was that Johnny came up on a bomb. That he was going to have to disarm in the field without any without any real refresher knowledge. Mm-hmm. The fact being is Johnny knew about the bomb beforehand. He knew what kind of missile it was. Well, yeah, he no, could I look know. it up right that night and figure out. Oh, this is the easiest thing in the world to disarm. Of course, yeah. So Johnny disarm. So we see an explosion in the water, mm-hmm. which is a little bit further away from the boat, and we think that Johnny's John- dead. We think that Johnny's dead. Or at least Mike does because he does, again, like we said, he doesn't know that everyone else is, like, behind him or that it was going to, or that they were going to let it explode because the goal was to just disarm it. And then, bam, oh, his eyes just fill up, and it's just so scary. Good acting. I mean, we all know. Oh, Good. fantastic. Great acting. And I love that I love that they're both, like, pissed for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Mike is pissed because, of course, he thinks Johnny's dead, and Bellows is pissed because of his like, drugs. You told me you gave somebody good, da, 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 makes it intense, which is so funny. You told me you. he was the best in the world. Yes, and right after Bello asks Mike to, or lets Mike shoot him, he says, he Michael, says, I am a, sorry for the way that I was acting. I overreacted. <laughs> I overreacted. Go, and I'm sorry for your loss. I am sorry for your loss. <laughs> Thanks, boss, but... But at the same time, you gotta you gotta understand with Bello, it's all business. He was gonna give Mike his cut. That's twenty five grand. Mm-hmm. He was gonna give his cut, and he had his number one guy shoot himself. Yeah. You can't forget that. Yeah. He doesn't really value mm-hmm. people. It's money. It's money, 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 and drugs. Right. Probably a lot of drugs, 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 drugs too. But 
I mean, he had his best friend who's been there, started from the bottom, now he was there. <laughs> Get out of here again. <laughs> he had him put a gun in his mouth and shoot his own head off. Right, I mean, of that's... Course. No, yeah, there's, he's, not, he's not merciful. He's he is not. a bad man. And it also makes me feel like he still knows that Mike is mm -hmm. a cop, trying to make him shoot his which own friend. Which is frustrating, because I, I'm not going to lie, Bello has this level, which, again, makes him a boss, of where, you, where he demands respect. But for a reasonable reason, because he's an educated man. He's, How do you not give an educated man respect? He's a very intelligent man. And it, as, as people will read online, too, they, the psychopaths have... There's some traits like that psychopaths have that, mm -hmm. that people who are very good at business also pertain to have. Of course. Like different like ways of thinking. And business is business. You right. shut off the emotions when it comes to business, and this mm -hmm. is the kind of man Bellows is. And when it affects business, he'll take out anyone, even his own, even his own guy. Yep. So we see the explosion. Everyone's freaking out. And we know Johnny's not dead. Like, we, because we're talking about it, we're like, he's not dead. There's no way he's dead. Yeah. But, they but the good part is, is still, he, Mike, he brings you back to that. He lets you know how it would feel because you're, for, for instance, myself, I just, it made me nervous because I'm like, oh, man. But at the same, no, but what, at the, what I'm saying is at the same time, people who aren't paying this close attention to the show, who are just watching the show, mm -hmm. They they filmed it in such a way with the radio going dead, with the next scene with Mike oh, on the stairwell. Excuse me, pause. Where you said that we filmed it, um, I apologize for not writing this down. But one of our YouTube viewers did ask us because there's a bit of a confusion of where as to where Graceland was being filmed. It is being filmed here in Los Angeles, and that's all I wanted to say. I'm yeah. fairly I'm fairly sure it is. Oh, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm fairly sure they said they filmed the pilot, I believe, in, in Florida. Florida. And mm -hmm. then they moved to Los Angeles, and they found a different location and everything. Right. And now I think it's in Malibu, I believe. But, yes, yeah, so they filmed it in such a way that someone who's not paying so close attention mm -hmm. would have that feeling that Mike, that Johnny died. Right. They would have that feeling because, of course, you have Mike. They don't know that Briggs didn't tell him about the bomb. Mm -hmm. They don't know all this background information. And the radio being cut and Mike calling Briggs and not being able to get a hold of him, you would have assumed that Mike had called Johnny already. Mm -hmm. But... He didn't. he didn't. He didn't. Storms into the office. Storms in the office. Um, Mike's a total mess. He is. Oh, he's so sweet. And I gotta say, it's it's kind of Mike's character is really experiencing some pretty terrible things. I mean, he had he had a man kill himself in front of him, with which kind of put him off kilter. Right. And that was only like three episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And now, already again, he experiences the loss the, of, like, one of his best friends. There. At, I mean, from the beginning, Johnny's the guy who showed him around, who talked to him, who's loose, who's not his training officer. Like, yeah. if he's going to have a friend there, and we, ha we obviously haven't seen that many reactions or interactions between him and Jake's. It's his boy. It's his only boy there right now. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough on Mike. Really tough on Mike. So, of course, he finds out that Johnny's fine. Which Johnny's, like, he does eating it. a sandwich. Yeah, like, right hey, behind him. is like, hey, up, man, bro? we did good. <laughs> so he hugs Johnny. Johnny, you're alive. Sees Briggs. Not And bad. Briggs is like, well, it was for the mission, blah, blah, I called an audible, blah, mm -hmm. Just runs. That was a great wide. That great was. wide shot. That was. Usually people will try to film a sucker punch from, uh, from like, a over the shoulder or maybe, mm -hmm. like, a, a lower angle up to just kind of cheated a little bit more. No, they, this they, is straight they up, saw the momentum in that. This is straight up right to each other. Smack. They did. That was great. It was a very, very well-filmed shot. Loved Which this. is good, too, because, you know, even in this moment, you you begin to see Mike, seeing Briggs in a different light because things like this keeps happening. And yet, like, I, and I would be mad, too, because I get that it's a part of the job and these guys have to do certain things where, like they said, you know, in order to for my life to be okay, I need details. Details are important. But Briggs is just doing these random things that are somewhat shady, somewhat selfish, and then also just not knowledgeable enough. I'm sure you've experienced it sometime in your life mm -hmm. where you know how to do something right and somebody is doing it wrong and they're getting better results than you. Right. And that's a very irritating feeling. And that's kind of what Mike is feeling at the moment. But the same fact, the thing that, he, that Briggs is doing wrong is putting other things in jeopardy. Like, right. he's... It's like trying to make a bomb around other people. You know how to do it right, and you see mm -hmm. someone next to you trying to make a bomb doing it wrong. The bomb could work, but at the same time, it could also blow up in your face and kill everyone around you. Well, yeah, while you're doing it. So Briggs course. is just like, he's a crappy bomb maker, basically, in this metaphor. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I like to use analogy or metaphor. So. No, that was good, but I'm just saying, I don't know if I agree or not. You but. don't. Mm, okay. So 
we find out that they, they got the heroin, mm -hmm. they got the drugs, they got the missile, all they did was blow up the Simtax that was connected to the missile, and um, they, they comment that this thing wasn't packed full. Usually they'd pack it all the way full, mm -hmm. and immediately I was just like, mother yeah. Briggs Briggs took it. Briggs the load immediately light. immediately we think Briggs took it. Right, of course. Which makes me sad too because that's I mean that's not what I wanna <sighs> And it's again, it's another drug bust that's not gonna get press. Briggs says it won't get any press, nobody's gonna know about it because we can't let Bello knows know we got it. Of course. So of course everything's under the table. Mm -hmm. And now that's when Johnny kinda throws up. He's like, Well no, I headed home in a cab. I let Briggs take the bust in. Yeah. And that's okay, definitely. That's the writers telling everyone who hasn't figured it out already, hey, mm -hmm. Briggs Which has is the drugs. Too. He did things like, no, as soon as I did it, I left. Why? Because Johnny was mad at Briggs. Perfect opportunity for Briggs to get what he wanted because Johnny wanted to get away from him. And then, bam. So Mike follows Briggs. He's holding a duffel bag. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's in the duffel bag, but he's holding a duffel bag. We assume it's the heroin, blah, 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 blah. But then we see a little scene with Charlie home with Johnny, and they have that nice little intimate watching the ocean. Mm -hmm. But it's more of like the mother-son kind of thing. He's yeah. just glad she's home. Briggs doesn't know she's home, but right. she wanted to go home, and that's, that's where her family is. So Briggs is driving, doing kind of a heat run. Not really, but Mike is following him, and he pulls up to the <laughs> sketchy place. I knew it, man. I knew it. Well, I didn't know where he was going to, but... He goes to the sketchy. Sorry, if you don't mind, I wanna. I'm like excited to say just, it. Yeah. So he goes to this place, and you know, Mike does a good job at following him, which I'm surprised because I thought I'm. I thought that maybe he was just gonna come around and be like, "Why are you following me?" But no, he gets to the spot. There's a light coming from a door. He opens the door lightly, and there Briggs is standing at a well first you're kind of confused i thought that he was about to teach a class for like a second so I was yeah like, oh, for like a few seconds th and, um, maybe he's just doing like a work thing uh but no and what's the the great line that we hear hi my name is paul whatever and i'm in heroin addict. he looks at mike first too yeah and he sees him first which i have to say in the when we saw it remember what i said i'm like i bet you that's not Briggs is a uh, CI's house. I bet you it's his house. I bet you it's his house. Especially the way that he grabbed the heroin and like you know exactly where it is. It's like you know? bedding and everything. You and wouldn't... then it was. And also, why would a CI just give up? Well, where did the guy go? He I would... mean, I know that they could have hooked him up, but still, he wouldn't let Charlie stay in a place mm -hmm. he didn't find safe. And, and he... it was empty. There wasn't anything in there. There yeah. was, and it would be per. And it just would make sense because you. Okay, every, the whole thing was that. You thought that he was just trying to get in on, like, selling your money and, you know, try to live well because that's what the, the hints are. But it could just be that. And you know what I said when we saw this scene with him at the head saying, I'm Paul Briggs and I'm mm -hmm. a heroin user? Lie! Yeah, lie. I don't know. It could be. It could be. Total lie. It could be. He knows Mike is on to him. He's known from the freaking beginning, especially when he asked Mike that question, putting a gun to his head, mm -hmm. and you never knew what he really wanted to expect, what he was expecting right, Mike course. to say. And this was after him looking at the like his file, like oh. why all of a sudden? He knows it's a lie. He knew Mike was following him. He knew that Mike would follow him. He was carrying a duffel bag just so Mike would follow him. Think, he yeah, made it maybe. so obvious with the heroin. Come on. He went to that meeting because he knew Mike would follow him. And immediately in the previews for next episode, we see Mike saying, we got to help Briggs. He's a good guy. Yeah. There you go. Briggs got yeah, Mike on his side. So, but that's like irritating because he, first of all, from the beginning, we know that Mike is, he follows the books. Rule by rule, rule guy. What do they do? They compare him to Paul Briggs. Why would, why would Briggs even assume that he wouldn't just go straight, you know? Or, or having to let somebody know. And then what I love, too, is that in the for next week, when Paige goes, it doesn't matter. Great line. Addicts can never be trusted. And it's true. You know, if he is, then it's just to, to save his own butt so that he can keep going. There's just no way. There is just absolutely no way. You can be a functioning alcoholic. Granted, you shouldn't, but Remember, you can be. His zen? But, what? but maybe he, he learned how to be high and act sober. No. No. Because he... He was. He didn't. Have, he doesn't have track don't marks. Tell me no. No. I'm saying no. I'm saying no right now. I'm saying this is. No. Let's do. Let's this do is too obvious. Then. Okay. We can go into predictions. Let's do some predictions, everybody. Our only. See. Well, they're switching out right now. Okay. But the only. The only person. The only news and gossip was Brandon 
Jay McLaren is coming in mm-hmm. next week. He's coming in next week. He's coming in next week. No. But <laughs> and so he's so cool. Jake's is such a cool guy. Right. I'm mean, totally gonna feel like an agent next. And week. we totally haven't seen him, so he better be pretty proud of Aminit next week's episode. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if not, it's okay. We'll have great questions for him. I love the writing for the show, but this is just way too left field that it's so obvious that Briggs is just. It's pull, he's pulling one over on Mike. We don't know. Or maybe they know that that's what everyone's thinking and they really he is going to be. Or maybe it's going to be something we don't even know. No, because, yeah, there's the predictions. There you go, predictions. Now, Briggs is way too intelligent. He's way too TV. put together. Mm-hmm. And somebody who's worried about getting their next fix or anything or even. Which they say that too. This is in the scene. There's, uh, this is going to make you feel even better. Okay, so I don't oh, think no, that that was a Charlie. lie. I don't think that was a lie. I think that is how he got his connections. I think that's from the past, though. That was from the past. He got his connections with, with the Odin, and that was when he was Andy. Mm-hmm. Or I think that was his name, right, Andy? Mm-hmm. Okay, but... No, Odin. Oh, no, Odin, but what was Briggs's... What do you mean? Briggs's cover name with Odin. Eric. Eric, that's Eric, right. Because when Briggs Eric, because Eric and Kate. So Eric and Kate, I think that Eric was kidnapped and put on heroin or something like that back in, back in the olden days, and that was a flashback. And that might have been what changed Briggs, and we'll find that that's one of the things that changed Briggs. But there is no way that Briggs is a heroin dealer, or not a heroin dealer, but a heroin addict. Just or from, that guy is actually talking to Charlie. Well, there you go. It's just yeah. honestly, I mean, looking at his character, there's no way that somebody can come up with these with these things and get away from Graceland every, like, five hours to get his next fix and then come back to Graceland. <laughs> there's just no way. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. And I think, if anything, he's taking the heroin and he's selling it, or he's making deals with the Khazar cartel. Because, honestly, Briggs, Briggs is the neutral evil guy. He's, he's chaotic neutral, whatever you want to call it. He is always after the big picture in mm-hmm. the case. So we always we thought that he was making another deal with, with Odin with that heroin that he stole. Mm-hmm. But he might be saving up this heroin. He might be making small deals here and there with an even bigger fish. And his main goal right now is to get this bigger fish. And we're going to find out about this. He's going to let Mike in on this huge case that we don't know about, that the FBI doesn't even know about, <laughs> later in this season. I go in-depth with this stuff. I know. <laughs> you I go, oh I go ham God. on these predictions. I know. Sometimes it makes me mad. I'm like, I don't even want to predict anything anymore. Get out of here. Briggs, <laughs> it, just think about it. It makes sense. If there's such a big case that Briggs does not want Mike in on it for reasons other than he has no, to take the heroin. The way you're predicting it is just in the prediction of what all of their, why they're investigating him. I think that they're going to be wrong. I think that Briggs is just going to be... No. Anyways, yeah. I guess we're going to find Yeah, Briggs, Briggs is not going to be who the FBI is investigating him for. They're going to find this huge case that Briggs has been working on under their back, like behind their back, trying to take it down because he has to use unlawful means to get to where he needs You're to get Mike, in. I'm Briggs. Let's just, I'm going to say that if we were both agents in that house, you know, I got to be I'm Briggs. Banks. <laughs> And you. No, I'm Stephanie Georgie. If you guys want to talk to me, talk about the show, talk about absolutely anything, please follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. My Twitter is at Stephanie with a PH, Georgie with a G I O R G I, last name, or on my Instagram at Steffi with a Y, G47. And you guys can find my friend over here. You can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S D E P H E N L E M I E U X, all one word, or on Facebook, check out my photography at S R Lemieux Photo, or you can also so check me out on the Dexter After Show here at AfterBuzz TV, as well as the Get Out Alive with Bear Grylls, this Graceland After Show, and ABC Family's Twisted on Tuesday nights. Thank you again for joining us for another After Thank Show you. for Graceland on USA. Tell your friends, uh, everybody. Tune in for Brandon Jeremy McLaren next week, and we will see you next week. Good evening, good morning, and good night. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.